All right, in this video, what I wanna do is cover three examples of problems with fractions that ultimately just confuse the heck out of students. And I want to be able to show you a way how I like to approach these problems, how I think of them. So if you look at immediately these problems and be like, yeah, this would confuse me too, well then hopefully this video will be helpful to you. So let's get right into it. In this one, I have three fourths divided by eight. Now I could have actually done subtraction or addition because probably that would have been confused just as many students with the division. But I did wanna cover at least one division since I already have subtraction going on over here. But I think the main thing that really gets confusing with this is whenever we're dealing with fractions and integers. So the best thing I always tell my students to do is like whenever you're dealing with a fraction integer, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, convert your integer to a fraction, right? Because you can always put a, a number over one and it's still the exact same value. Now I have three fourths divided by an eight over one. And hopefully if we remember kind of when we're doing division of fractions, that division of fractions, all we simply need to do is reciprocate our divisor and then we can apply multiplication. So now I have three fourths times one over eight and I can multiply straight across, which is going to be a three over four times eight, which is going to be a 32. Always look to be able to simplify, but in this case, we're gonna be good to go. Now the next one is, I think one of the more confusing ones. Not only do I have a negative and then we're doing subtraction, but I also have two fractions that do not have common denominators. And I think whenever we're dealing with, you know, addition and subtraction of fractions, and we don't have common denominators, immediately I think some kids just check out. They're like, ah, oh, I hate doing this. Like, why do we have to go through this process again? So I think one of the easiest things we can always do when we're trying to identify a common denominator is just multiply your two denominators. Now, again, if you don't already recognize, like let's say this was like four and eight, I wouldn't want to multiply them. I would recognize that they have a common denominator or a common multiple already of eight. But if we know that there's nothing in common that they have immediately, like four and five, then I know I can get a common denominator or at least common denominator of 20. Now, just remember when we are creating our least common denominator for our fractions, whatever we multiply in the denominator, we also have to multiply in the numerator. So in this case, to get a 20 in this denominator, I need to multiply by a five. So therefore, since I'm multiplying a five in the denominator, I need to multiply by a five in the numerator. Over here, to get a 20, I need to multiply by a four. So I'll multiply by four on the top and the bottom. So up top here, I'll have a negative 15 over a 20 minus a 16 over a 20. All right, now, what do we do about this negative and subtraction? So the best way I always like to think about this, and again, this is for a little bit more older grades. Remember, you can always rewrite subtraction as plus a negative, right? So now you can see I have a negative number plus another negative number, which simply means I'm just going to be combining my two numerators together. It's just gonna be a negative number at the end. When we're adding fractions and they have a common denominator, we're gonna keep the common denominator the same, and we're just going to add our two numerators. In this case, I have a negative 15 plus a negative 16, which is going to be a negative 31, all over a 20. Now, this was not written in a mixed number, but since I know this answer, I'm not gonna be able to rewrite it into a mixed number. I'm gonna go ahead to show you how to go ahead and do that as well. So if I wanna rewrite this as a mixed number, because right now it's written as an improper fraction, I wanna say, well, how many times does 20 go into 31, which is going to be a one time? What would be the remainder of that? Well, that's going to be a 11. So one, 11 over 20, and just remember that is a negative. So it'd be negative one, 11 20ths from that case. So that is how you go from an improper fraction to a mixed number, which again is a lot of times what confuses students because over here, a lot of times students will get confused in that case. And they might say, well, let me go and subtract my whole numbers and then I'll subtract my fractions. But that's a lot of times where students make mistakes. So get in the theme of not making mistakes or not getting confused, the way that I like to deal with improper fractions is to simply, or I'm sorry, mixed numbers, is to simply convert them to improper fractions and then apply the operation. And if I need to rewrite them back into mixed numbers, I can go and do that. Now, that might not be the best, the fastest way for every single problem. I totally understand that. And it might not be the way that your teacher is teaching you. That's perfectly fine, okay. A lot of times you can do it really fast and easy without making mistakes by applying your operation to your whole numbers and then applying that operation to the fractions. I have just found whenever I just get in the form of rewriting things into improper fractions, applying the operations, I make less mistakes. So let's go through that. To rewrite something as a mixed number into improper fraction, you're just gonna take your denominator, multiply by your whole number, add to the numerator. Four times three is 12. 12 plus one is going to be 13, eight times two is going to be 16. 16 plus five is going to be a 21. All right, now all I simply need to do, oh, again, remember this is subtraction, sorry about that. 
Now I got to get them to be common denominators. In this case, I wouldn't want to multiply them, right? Remember, I kind of gave that example. I don't want a common denominator of 32. I recognize if I just multiply here this 4 by 2, I automatically get 8. So my LCD in this case is going to be 8. So that means all I need to do is multiply by 2 on this left-hand side. So 2 times 13 is going to be a 26 all over an 8 minus a 21 over 8. And 21 minus 26 is going to be a 5. And so therefore, I'm going to get a final answer of 5 eighths. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be your three examples that students get most confused with on fractions.